Hi everyone, this is Douglas Fancini and I'm going to share with you my studies on these questions and answers on the CCNP Encore 350-401 of this certification. We're now on chapter 5, okay? I'm recording this in English now because one of my followers asked me on YouTube comment for me to record this in English so thank you I don't remember exactly what is your name but uh, we are going to study now about the do I know this already questions here in English okay thank you very much and we're going to discuss a little bit about the questions uh, these are the do I know this already questions so if you already know these questions you can go ahead and continue to the other chapter on the certification okay if you perform in a good way on these questions it means you know a lot and you can go to chapter six for example but now we are on chapter five question number one that is about the vtp protocol okay the question is which of the following is not is not a switch role for VTP okay as you know from your CCNA studies we have some modes for the VTP protocol and some of them uh, it is a client so uh, a switch can be on client mode for the VTP so VTP mode client and the other can be VTP mode server and some of the other modes that people don't know it is the transparent mode that is a little bit different from the server and client so the server will be the switch where you're going to configure and the client will be the switch where it's going to receive the configuration from the server okay but there's another one that is the transparent mode it is where you're going to receive BPDUs, uh, receive information about the VTP modes normally, okay? But you're not going to be participating in this domain of the VTP, okay? And there is another one that is the off state or the off mode that is not, nothing is going to happen in this because the, the protocol is turned off. So what is nothing has to do with the question is this proxy one oh my god proxy has nothing to do with the question so this is the one that is not a switch role for vtp okay so vtp roles or modes are the server that is the default mode for all the switches the client the transparent and the off okay why is the server the default mode for the VTP protocol because you can create a VLAN on a switch once you have just one switch for example you can create VLANs you can remove VLANs add VLANs uh, but if you are a client it is because you're going to join two switches in a in the same domain and you're going to communicate by the server and client of communication okay let's continue to question number two oh, okay but first we have a, a short explanation on this the number one is letter c because the switch can operate with the vtp roles that is client server transparent and off but proxy is not a vtp switch role okay question number two Number two, it is a true or false question. You got to pay attention to the words, okay? So the VTP summary advertisement includes the VLANs that were recently added, deleted, or modified. People, please be careful with these questions because it is a summary advertisement. It will not, it will not include the VLAN information, VLANs information nothing about the VLANs but about the configuration of the protocol for example this is false because no VLANs info is going to be advertised to the other switches in the domain okay no VLAN information and this is false the VTP summary includes the VTP version VTP domain configuration revision and timestamp but no VLAN information okay no VLAN information be careful with this one Question number three is another true or false question. So let's go there. There can be only one switch in a VTP domain that has the server mode. This is complicated because once we have a server and some clients, clients is, is okay that we know that can be a lot of clients, but what about the, 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 the server? 
switch is working on the server mode or server role yes they can be they can be multiple multiple servers and there is there's not no no not just one okay switch can be configured as the the server but multiple servers as you can see can be configured as a uh, server mode and they will process the information as they were clients with no problem okay so this is false there can be multiple vtp servers seen a vtp domain they process updates from other vtp servers just as with a client with no problem okay number four which of the following is a common disastrous vtp problem with moving a switch from one location to another oh my god this can be a problem if you are working in a vtp domain and you just uh, remove a switch without taking care of it these are going to make a problem with wrong updates to the other switches so as you can see letter b is the correct answer because the moved switch sends an update to the vtp server and delete vlans for example this is just one example of things that can happen if you just remove or move a switch from the, the topology uh, you're going to have problems if you don't take care about this okay so the the correct is letter b if the switch has a higher revision number than the current vtp domain so the revision number is an important information that will show to the other switches that this is coming from the higher level to the lower level and this can be uh, a problem if you remove one in the middle for example so the current vtp domain when a vlan is deleted it can send an update to the vtp server and remove the vlan from all switches in the vtp domain think about this this can be a great problem if it happens okay number five true or false another true or false question if two switches are connected and configured with the command switch port mode dynamic auto the switches will establish a trunk link uh, be careful with this we're talking now about the dtp protocol so dynamic trunking protocol if you don't remember about this take a look on the guide the official guide of the cisco for for ccnp that is this one the 350-401 you have some explanations on this but uh, take care about this because this is false because if one switch is configured with the switch port mode dynamic auto the switch the switches will not establish a, a trunk because of this if one side is auto uh, dynamic auto the this requires the odd other side to start the communication so if uh, if one side is configured as auto the other side has to start this con communication for we to form a trunk link for we to establish a, fun a trunk link so be careful with this this is false so dynamic auto requires the other side to initiate a request uh, of the DTP protocol in order to form a trunk link be careful with this question people number six the command blank prevents DTP from communicating and agreeing upon a link being a trunk port okay be careful with this because there is one command that will prevent DTP from communicating and forming a link a trunk link okay with a port for example and this command is the no negotiate no negotiate switch ports no negotiate will prevent uh, a, a link from being a trunk okay it will not work as a trunk if you configure with this command switch port no negotiate okay be careful with this the command switch port negotiate disables DTP on a port so DTP is not going to form link with uh, uh, dynamically okay if you want to uh, form a trunk in this case you got to do it in a manually uh, way just configuring for example switch port mode trunk and, and then you're going to have a trunk link number seven true or false PAGP is an industry standard dynamic link aggregation protocol this is telling you that PAGP is an open standard but this is not true okay this is false because P 
PHP is a Cisco proprietary protocol for bundling. Okay, is this bundling protocols uh, as you, as you know, you have the LACP that is an open standard, and you have the PHP that is a Cisco proprietary protocol for you to bundle. Okay, for you to make link aggregation or lags, as you know. Okay. Number seven, so it is false because PHP is a Cisco proprietary link bundling protocol. Careful with that, people. Number eight, uh, another question about Ether channel bundles or link aggregation, as you as you as you know, or I don't know how do you call this, but there are a lot of uh, descriptions for this. Some people call it Ether channels, some people call it link aggregations, some people call it bundle, uh, some people call it port channel, I don't know, but uh, in the question it is, an ether channel bundle allows for link aggregation for which types of ports, okay? Choose all that apply. Uh, the question is about what kind of interfaces can I make ether channels with? Bundle. What kind of interfaces can I bundle? Can I link aggregation, for example? Uh, we, we know that we have uh, access ports and trunk links and X uh, trunk links for we to make ether channels and a look back for we do uh, it is not it is okay with the look back but the problem is with this word routed because the name of the interface the name of the interface is not routed route routed is the the verb that is applied on this interface but the correct answers here is the access link, the trunk link, and the loopback interfaces. Because we can do this in layer two and layer three. But a routed interface, what is it called? A loopback. So letter C is not okay. Is not okay. Not applied. So the others are okay. You can make an ether channel with access ports, with trunk ports, with loopback interfaces, but not with routed. But the problem is with this explanation here. An Ether channel bundle allows for a virtual port channel that acts with a layer 2 access or trunk, okay? So layer 2 ports are access port or trunk. You can make an, an Ether channel with them. And the layer 3 routed interface is not routed, the name of the interface, but the name of the interface is loopback interface. Very good. Number 9. What are the benefits of using an Ether channel? Choose two. Uh, you you got to pay attention to this because take a look at letter C a small configuration it is not a small configuration because for you to form an ether channel you got to configure a little bit so it is not a correct answer this letter C and a per packet load balance C this is not what we are talking about but letter A and B I like this ones so increased bandwidth between devices, it is okay. And a reduction of topology change changes and convergence. Yes, because if you lose one of the links in this ether channel, the other will continue working and there's no problem. So increased bandwidth, I just put it BW, but bandwidth, okay? And better convergency are the benefits for you to when you configure ether channel, okay? Number nine, explanation, A and B are correct. An ether channel bundle provides increased bandwidth between devices and does not generate a topology change with the addition or removal of member links, for example. Number 10, one switch has an ether channel configured as auto. Pay attention to this question. What options on the other switch can be configured to establish an ether channel bundle? Guys, you gotta, Pay attention to the questions and remember about two layer protocol, two uh, uh, link aggregation protocols that you have uh, and ether channel protocols that we have. We have the PAGP and LACP. So take a look at the quest, at the answers and you can say that B and D are opposite. So active and passive. These are good for one of these LACP or PAGP, okay? But in the question, it says, if one switch has an ether channel configured as auto, what is the other side has to be configured as? As a desirable people, because active and passive 
are for LACP protocol. So the desirable combines with auto, okay? And the active and passive combines for the LACP. This is the correct answer. So desirable is the other side for auto. Desirable is the correct answer. So if one device is configured with PAGP auto, the other device must be configured with desirable to form an ether channel bundle. Very good. Number 11, true or false? LACP and PAGP allow you to set the maximum number of member links in an ether channel bundle. Uh, this question can be a problem for people who work just with one of the protocols and doesn't and don't know the other for example if you just work with Cisco you're not going to know this maximum number for example but if if you work just with LACP you you work with minimum and maximum member links but the question is what about PAGP it uses it uses the maximum and minimum number of links for example people take care it is false only LACP allows so be careful if you use and work just with one of these protocols you, you need to know the other even if you don't use you need to know okay so let's go for the explanation of number 11 so number 11 is false only LACP allows you to set the maximum number of member links in an ether channel bundle so only LACP uh, allows you to set the maximum number okay, of member links. So guys, thank you very much. My name is Douglas Fancini again. Uh, I hope you like this video. Uh, I hope you share this video with your friends on groups, on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you want. Communicate with me through this email, okay? Uh, I'm a CCNA I'm, and I'm tracking my CCNP, my new CCNP. Please subscribe to this channel and just hit the, the, the bell icon so you can receive uh, the updates on this channel. And I thank you so much. See you next time. Bye bye guys.